Hello food friends. My name is Jennifer Crawford and welcome to my queer kitchen. I'm coming to you from Brooklyn, Nova Scotia. And today we're going to be making my favorite treat cereal. And today we're doing a version that's really special, uh, which is Nova Scotian oat cake treat cereal with double double milk. Let's do it. <laughs> This is a comfort food inspired by delicious sugary breakfast cereals and it has infinite variations. Whatever your favorite treats are, with milk, in a bowl. Oat cakes are a special food from Nova Scotia and there's a few different kinds. Some of them are like soft and chewy and then others are like buttery, crispery, crispery. Others are buttery, crispy, like dream bites. And I think like the buttery, crispy ones are super perfect for cereal. I have such fond memories of my high school job where I worked at a coffee place uh, as they rolled out oat cakes for the first time. And I always had them with a double double on my break. Um, so yeah, this treat cereal is gonna take us back to that. This recipe is an adaptation from the amazing recipe developer and food photographer, Kelly Neal. Uh, without her, this wouldn't have been possible. So Kelly, thank you so much for testing this recipe so many times and making such a reliable, delicious treat for us all. What we're going to need for this is, very importantly, half a cup of butter, half a cup of brown sugar. We're going to need a cup of oats. I have Scottish oats here. Uh, you can use large flake oats, you can use instant oats. Um, the most traditional is rolled oats. And then also we have three quarter cups of white flour, half a teaspoon of salt, and half a teaspoon of baking powder. And then this jar here is the double double milk that I've already made, but I will talk you through that as well. I feel shy even calling that a recipe, honestly, because it's mostly just making coffee. The first thing that you need is your butter um, at room temperature. I've cubed mine just to make this a little bit easier. And uh, what we're gonna do is whip it until it is light and fluffy. And this usually takes, I don't know, three, four minutes. Just keep an eye on it. If you don't have a stand mixer, a handheld mixer totally works also. Just whisk it like you would icing or anything. Um, this can even be done by hand. It's just a lot more muscle, um, but if you have a whisk and you have the will, it can be done. Before I turn this mixer on, it's like, uh, it's my mom's that I'm borrowing and I'm still getting to know it and it has some idiosyncrasies. So if you see me hugging this in a minute because it likes to dance, you'll know what's happening. <laughs> Okay, this is about to get a little weird. Okay, you're probably supposed to get a spatula and push that down the sides, uh, but that is my general technique for getting butter off the sides of the bowl. Mm. Okay, when the butter has kind of changed color and it's looking like really white and kind of fluffy, that's when you want to put in all of your sugar, all at once and continue whipping for about another two minutes or so. Okay, so once everything's all whipped together and nice and fluffy looking, what you're gonna do is take uh, all the rest of these dry ingredients and whisk them together so that it's nice and even. So this is my, uh, my flour. Um, Sorry, I just had a moment of like, God, is it three quarter cups of flour or one cup of flour? And I actually need to check just to make sure I'm not messing it up for people. Yes, okay, great. It is three quarter cups of flour, sorry. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is mix all these dry ingredients together before you combine them in with the nice fluffy butter and sugar. So there's my three quarter cups of flour. Um, this is my one cup of oats. And then my half teaspoon of baking powder and half a teaspoon of salt. And then uh, with your whisk, just give it a little, little, I don't know, <laughs> give, it a, give it a little whisk is probably the thing to say until it's all nice and even. You're just making sure everything is distributed evenly so that way it's, uh, it comes together better in the final product. Um, I'm gonna put this in to the mixer all at once. 
um, and then just start on very, very low until the dry stuff starts to really stick to the butter. Um, and then once it has done that and it's not flying everywhere, I'm gonna turn it up. Yeah, just gonna crank it a little bit. Okay, so uh, what I'm doing now to test uh, whether this is ready to be rolled out is I'm grabbing a little pawful and it's, you'll see it's like lots of crumbs and then I'm just giving it like a squeeze to see how much it sticks together. And there's still kind of like, it's still a bit too dry, so it needs a bit more moisture to come together. Uh, so I'm gonna grab a couple tablespoons of hot water. This is two tablespoons of hot water. I am going to put it in here. Well, and a few drops of it on the table, I guess. <laughs> and now I'm gonna put it on low, just so I can see how it's coming together. Oh, yes. We are in business now! See, two tablespoons of water is all it took for it to go from that powdery stuff I showed you to this glorious chunk. And that's ready to be a damn cookie. Look at this beauty! This is not the best decision I've ever made. There we go. <laughs> okay, so now we have a beautiful dough. I'm gonna set up an area here where I can dump it all out and we can get to rolling and then scoring it into little treat cereal sized oat cakes. Okay, this is a really fun part. Oh, this looks so good. Only little bits of stickies left. Um, what you're gonna do now is take this nice pile of dough and just shape it with your hands into a nice, disc. Um, what you're going to do is make kind of a rectangle so that way um, when you go to roll it out it uh, is easier to roll it out into a rectangle shape. What I like to use for that, some people use like a pastry cutter. I have a trowel from Home Hardware that I like to use for pretty much everything um, including shaping discs of dough. Um, it just makes everything so much easier. Okay. Looking good. I'm gonna try to get this pretty flat. That way when I go to roll it, it doesn't have a super long way to go. Um, you can flour your surface here if you like, but uh, the little marble slab that I'm using is pretty good at not uh, sticking to things, which is really nice. So let's see. All right, what a cute little beauty. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna grab a piece of parchment. Um, I actually ran out of parchment this morning, so I am reusing a piece from the other day, uh, which is, you know, quarantine kitchen. That's what you gotta do. Uh, I'm gonna roll this out to about five millimeters thick. Like, um, I don't know, how is that helpful? <laughs> At this point, you have the choice of making these into straight up Nova Scotia oat cakes, which means you can cut them to whatever size you want. Um, I feel like this would cut nice into like, I don't know, maybe eight or 10 pieces. Um, or you can go the cereal route, which means we're gonna cut it into like 50. <laughs> but really that's totally up to you at this point. Once you have your dough all rolled out, uh, now is the time that we're cutting it. And what I'm gonna do is use this trowel, just because it's such a perfect size, I use it for almost everything in the kitchen, for icing cakes, for cutting cookies, um, yeah, cleaning up my messes. Uh, you can also just use a sharp knife, you can use a pizza cutter. Um, so what I'm gonna do is trim the edges, just to give us like a nice rectangle shape, just the uneven stuff. Um, and then what I usually do with those bits is roll them back up and then make a big super cookie just for myself or maybe to share with my dog Tega. And then what we have now is a nice rectangle. And then whenever I'm doing something like this, sometimes I break out the ruler, other times I kind of just work in fractions. I couldn't think of the word for a second. So when I say work in fractions, what I mean is I pick exactly as best I can eyeball 
making a, a score right down the middle. And you don't have to go all the way through, just even halfway is good. And then on this side, I pick the halfway point between that line and the edge. And then the same on the other side, the line between that and the edge. So I've just cut this into like basically four even quarters, four even quarters. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make many cuts along this way and I'm gonna work in the exact same sort of principle where I, like I've turned my, turned my work, turned my cookies. Those lines are now perpendicular to me. I'm gonna make a score halfway through, right down the middle here. So now what we have is a grid of 16. And what I'm gonna do now is um, divide again in half uh, going this way. So we're doubling it and making these nice little um, cereal sized Nova Scotia oat cakes. Okay, they're almost totally even. <laughs> um, so that's what it looks like now. Uh, what will happen in the oven is that these are going to crisp up and get really beautiful. Preheat your oven to 350. These take around 10 to 12 minutes. I would say start watching them around 10 minutes. Once you see the very edges getting nice and toasty brown, you know they're done. Um, then after you've taken it out of the oven, what you'll do is take a nice sharp knife and you'll go right down these lines where you've scored them to make the edges super, super, super sharp. It's like I always want cereal edges to look as sharp as my eyeliner. And then you let it cool for 20 minutes and then you break them all up. If you're going to dip your oat cakes in chocolate, you need about a cup of really dark chocolate. Uh, I just use chocolate chips. And there's a bunch of different ways to melt chocolate. You can do it in little bursts in the microwave. Uh, you can do it on a double boiler. Oh, right. Yes, okay. While your cookies are baking, now you can make your double double milk. I'm gonna give you the recipe for it now. You make one cup of very strong coffee and then you stir in two teaspoons of white sugar and then you stir in half a cup of heavy cream, like the good, good stuff, like the 35% milk fat stuff. And it's slightly more like pew pew, like kapow tasting than maybe your normal double double, but because we're gonna cool it down, it's going to taste slightly less intense when it's not hot. And then also just the fat from the cream is really going to balance out the whole dish. Just mwah. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a small demo of what to do when all of your cute as heck oat cakes come out of the oven. So here's like some test ones that I have. Here is some nice melted chocolate and here's my little sprink station and then a nice piece of parchment to, uh, to let them dry on. So we're just trying to get that drama. So I'm gonna take this little guy and then I just dip it in just halfway, nice and even. And then you just wipe the excess off the bottom. Like it still covers the bottom and looks really dramatic and cute. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it keeps it from oozing and pooling everywhere when you put it back down on the parchment. And maybe I'm gonna get this puppy in here. Okay, big action shot. POV, oatcake sprinks. Yes, okay. There! So yeah, repeat that for all of your cookies. Leave them out at room temperature for maybe, I don't know, an hour or so, so they can set up a bit and then transfer them to the fridge. If you transfer them right away, the oils from the chocolate will kind of separate and give it like a bit of a white cloudy look. If you let it kind of come up to temperature more naturally uh, and then into the fridge, you'll avoid that happening altogether. And then that's it, it's time to eat, I think. Okay, 
In my research experience thus far, I have found that pretty much every treat cereal tastes even better when the milk is served from a fancy heckin' pouring thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it also tastes like a hundred points better when poured from on high. All right. POV eating some oat cake cereal. It tastes like a road trip. Oh, sorry, that made me have some surprise emotions. It's nice to uh, be able to channel the taste of some of the stuff not quite available to us right now. Hmm, like little road trip in a bowl. Tega can hear me eating and is coming to taste test. Okay, Tega, sit. Good dog. Hi, cutie. Food is something that not only keeps me well, but helped me to get well when things were really tough for me. And things are really tough right now. I know not just for me, for lots of folks. And being able to cook and make tastes and flavors and experiences that kind of channel, um, yeah, the stuff that's not available to us right now is super powerful. And I hope it keeps, yeah, I really hope it keeps you well too. I, didn't, I don't wanna like totally lose my shit, but I almost lost my shit. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to My Queer Kitchen. This has been Treat Cereal Week with oat cake cereal and double-double milk. Keep well, stay safe, and eat really good snacks.